Good evening to our halftime show here on a homecoming night. I am joined by Mr. Tony Coppola, the director of IT for the USD 231 Gardner Edgerton School District. Mr. Coppola, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Well, thank you for having me. Tell us, now that we are learning in a virtual platform and on a virtual platform, what does your workload look like these days? Well, we, everything has kind of changed with uh, the way uh, for this school year. We, we, have, uh, we have a lot more remote students, that, that, you know, so we have, but we have a fantastic team that's taking care of that. We have, a, you know, a fantastic group of people. We have people that are answering emails and phone calls from, from, our, from our students, our parents, and from our staff. We have, a, we have a group that's actually repairing any broken Chromebooks and fixing them and sending it, you know, and so we, we can reuse them again. We have uh, we have uh, uh, some uh, some of our building techs that go out to our buildings, take care of our um, our, our teachers' uh, equipment, and so we yeah we just it's just it's a definitely a new experience that we're learning. Well, I'm sure it is. So, what are your different grade levels using? Are all students using a Chromebook? What are your kindergartners, your elementary school, yeah. middle school, high school students? What are they using? Yeah. Uh, we're all, they're all, we've given all of our uh, middle school and high school students uh, Chrome, uh, have Chromebooks they take home. Uh, we have uh, remote uh, elementary students that have Chromebooks they're taking home, and we have Chromebooks in the classroom. So, yeah, every, just about everyone's using a Chromebook now. Well, what would you say the comfortability level is for your teachers and staff members as they've now morphed into this new reality of a virtual uh, platform? Our, our teachers are doing a fantastic job. They've they've picked up on a lot of uh, new technologies and, and new ways to teach, and it's gone it's gone really well as far as uh, as far as that. Well, tell us if you have any advice for any of our scholars that are watching and families are watching. What are some of the things that you can say to them in order to troubleshoot maybe some of the issues that students may be experiencing? Our biggest issues, uh, for if you're running into problems, uh, well, besides uh, calling us or, or leaving an email, is uh, you can uh, your check your connect connections. Uh, you can uh, uh, remove profiles and, and re-enter and re-enter your uh, enter your account, um, account credentials. Uh, so a variety yeah, of yeah. things that students could do. Yeah. to really try to get around that. Well, hey, I know that we've run out of time. You and I could probably talk on and on because yeah. we both have experienced this. Yeah. But Mr. Coppola, I thank you so much. It's nice to put yeah. a face to the person who's working behind the scenes in technology. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for your team that makes all of this happen. All right, thank you. We appreciate you. We'll be right back after this brief message. sounds just like you. Chuck, tell us about the duo from Shawnee Mission North. Well, the Shawnee Mission North, they call them the One of the keys to the football game tonight, as we see uh, Gardner Edgerton keep the football on the ground after three plays. Tyler Butash had a nice long touchdown run. Uh, so far, it looks like the, uh, uh, the, the, the Trailblazers were able to control the line of scrimmage on that. So um, we're expecting a lot more of that tonight. And with Shawnee Mission East, Shawnee Mission North, I'm sorry, uh, expect some of the same. 
they are also a, a power running football team, but they also can throw the football. So it should be very good tonight as, as both these offensive and defensive lines beat up on each other for the evening. Who are those two players that we should look out from, uh, from north to see some movement on the line? Well, two of the players we, we had spotlighted earlier was number three, Juan Jones. Uh, as I said earlier, he was a 6'1", 190-pound uh, senior. He's their number one target when they, mission, when, they, when they throw the football. And he can be explosive when he gets the ball into his hands. And then there's number four, uh, an Eric Duarte. He's 5'11", weighs about 180 pounds, but he's a junior. And he leads the team in rushing and, and, and scoring in points. Uh, in fact, he scored six touchdowns against, uh, in their first win against Turner in week one. Any particular players that we spotlight on the Trailblazer squad? Well, it'd be interesting when the, once the Trailblazers do get the football, but on the defensive side of the ball, you're going to watch for number 42. Watch for Ozzie Pogue. Uh, he's 6'3", a 216-pound sophomore. And last week he had two fumble recoveries, and he was instrumental in a, uh, in a number of big stops for the Trailblazers. And uh, offensively, look at the quarterback, Asher Weiner. Uh, he's 6'5", 192 pounds, and he's a freshman. He did a great job last week running the Trailblazers offense, he converted some very key uh, fourth down plays, and showed a lot of poise and leadership in the pocket. And what interception! We have here, interception. Oh, interception! I am so sorry! Touch down, Trailblazers! Yeah, that's no problem. Number seven, Devontae Pritchard picks one off and takes it back to the house. That was a great pickoff. It was pretty quick. I didn't mean to be rude That's to interrupt okay. you, but hey. That's okay. They're not here to call see that. They're not here to listen to me. They're here to watch the ball game. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, the score may be deceiving on the board or the graphics that you see, but it's currently 13 to nothing with less than less than three minutes elapsed in this quarter, in this game. And the point after is good. Trailblazers off to a great start tonight. They've had a nice long run from Tyler Butas, and, tonight, and then now they get a pickoff for a touchdown. Run all the way back by Devontae Pritchard, who was also a, a K-State commit. So Wildcats could be getting a pretty good uh, ball player. It's a nice deflection. Yeah, the deflection I'm was not, really nice. That was by number Number four, four. deflected that, and that was um, Hayden, Hayden Dyer. Dyer. And once the ball gets into to, uh, Fritcher's hands, nobody's going to catch him. He's gone. I mean, that was really a weird play. That but was. We'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it. We definitely expected the Trailblazers to be able to bounce back. We didn't know it was going to be this quick. <laughs> and to spot 14 in less than three minutes. Well, that's how you want your homecoming to start off. That's exactly how you want it. That's how you want your homecoming to start off and get everybody into a good mood. And You always want to win your homecoming game. Yes, you do, and this is homecoming, as Chuck said. Uh, so at halftime, we will be honoring our homecoming court. That's going to be interesting. I would like to see that. You know, with it being a, uh, the period of the time that we're in among the pandemic, uh, it's nice to be able to see some things continue on. Absolutely. To the smaller scale. Very nice Absolutely. stop. Uh, that was a beautiful stop right there. Trying to see who made the tackle on that. I believe that was number 28. Yeah, that was number 28. And Lucas Anderson? Absolutely. Very nice hit. So the ball was spotted at the 39-yard line, first and 10. I'm sorry, at the 29-yard line, first and 10, north. I like what Edgerton's doing, Gardner Edgerton's doing when they, when they do kick off. They're kind of pinning them against the sideline, making them, giving them one direction to run in. So that makes it easier for the defense to converge on the football. Sometimes it's a little scary. You never wonder if the ball is going to go out of bounds. <laughs> this is true. They've definitely have picked it up. <clears throat> nice defensive stand. Snuff that out. Snuff that out. Not fooled at all. Great tackle. Number 54, looked like Dawson Williams made the tackle on that. Brings up a second down. That was a loss of three yards on the play. Look at the defensive line for, for Edger, Gardner Edgerton. Here comes a blitz from the over. outside. There's another the fumble. Ball Ball's fumbled. hit, fumbled. He was going towards a forward I think pass. It, I think it's the, the, the Trailblazers football. It's the Trailblazers Turn football. Over. Turn over. You were right, Chuck. Indeed. Wow. You're talking back to back drives, and we start with turnovers. You're talking about getting out to a fast start. 
this is this is what uh, Coach Cornelson. This is what his team really needed. They needed to get off to a fast start tonight. Absolutely. They need to exert their dominance. Well, you know, last team week, China, Michigan. last week we saw uh, the Eagles. I mean, the, the the Eagles. They were able to run and move pretty quickly and move often. But the defense actually, for the most part, really held its ground, and it just got to a point where there were some mistakes. And they and they were, you know, they they got they got tired. Yes. And as simple as there's no other way to say it, but. It's a timeout on the field. Yeah, last week. Oh, on, false start. Only the North's offensive line is just so much bigger than than uh, the Trailblazers were, and um, after uh, an entire game of playing both offense and defense for the Trailblazers. By the time the fourth quarter came, they were kind of gassed. And it was to be expected. Yeah. Olathe North is a big team. so And that's what they do. They run the football. So this is a great start for the Trailblazers. This is what they needed to do. This is excellent. Well, they have a chance at the 832 mark to take it into the end zone for a third time. <laughs> Plenty of time. Nice pass towards the sideline. Pass was completed at the 16-yard line. Picked up of nine yards. Nice catch by Ethan Reynolds. As I said last week, watching um, Asher Weiner roll out, poise in the pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, very comfortable back there. He's got a very good arm. So took his time, rolled out, found his man, and hit him. Well, we've seen both teams go aerial. Unfortunately for uh, North, uh, it's resulted in interceptions and or fumble. Nice opening. That's number 17. Looks like he's going into the end zone. Not quite. They did not rule it a touchdown just shy of the end zone. That was number 17. Jake McClure. Jake McClure, I believe. Yep. Once again, poise in the pocket. For Weiner, sits back, surveys the field, finds his man in the flat, hits him, and McClure breaks the tackle and gets down to the one-yard line. First and goal. All as, ones as appearing as on the board. As we can see it, takes his time. Nice throw. Nice catch. And he's down at the one-yard line. 11 yards after the play, after the catch, he made it down. And the ball is run into the end zone very easily, calmly. That's a touchdown, Trailblazers. Number seven, Devontae Pritchard. Having a, having a night on both sides of the ball, offense and defense. Nice blocking up front. You see on the replay as the Trailblazers, as they move out, Shiny Mission North off the ball. Nice blocking. The guard pulls. Pritchard just walks in. No one touched him. And Trailblazers lead 21 to nothing with seven minutes and 53 seconds left in the first quarter. And less than five minutes is gone from this game. I'll tell you what. And this is going to be a high scoring affair for somebody. And I think somebody's going to be the good guys. <laughs> it's going to be the good guys. We welcome all of you that are watching from all over here in Southern Johnson County. Uh, we're just glad that you've joined us uh, and that you're a part of this broadcast. HSTV that is dedicated to Gardner Edgerton High School and to uh, Gardner Edgerton School District. We are so grateful to have this opportunity that Superintendent Pam Strath and, um, and her team, uh, Mr. Ryan Colston, and the boards of the district, and those who are instrumental in making this happen, that this is occurring. We also have to give some credence to uh, Principal Frank Bell and Assistant Principals Kelsey Bacalar, Scott PV. Tony Taylor and Melissa Beach. We're just so delighted to be a part of this and to bring this broadcast to each and every one of you. Share the link. Share this link and invite others to watch. This is going to be a great game for our Trailblazers. That was a nice run back, number 12 for Shiny Mission North. You know, so far the Trailblazers have kind of had their way. They've had a couple of turnovers to go their way. They've scored off each turnover. And uh, now they need to keep their focus. Because when, when, you, when you have a team down, you need to keep them down. There's still quite a bit of time left in this game, so uh, we don't want to take our foot off the throttle. First and 10 from the 37-yard line. Nice stop. 
It's a loss on the play. Jake McClure was in on that tackle. Along with number 42, Ozzy Poe. Ozzy had a great game last week, didn't he? He really did. He picked up two fumbles. So there were turnovers on both sides. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it looked at one point that Trailblazers were going to come back, uh, make a run, but North was just a little bit too much. Very short game. Maybe just enough to get back to the original line of scrimmage. So it's third down at 10. Once again, Ozzy Pogue getting on the tackle along with a host of other Trailblazers. Ozzy, 6'3", 216-pound sophomore. He's still growing. <laughs> I'm sure his parents know that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> third and 10. Comes the blitz, and they jumped a little bit too soon. Trailblazers, Trailblazers trying to blitz. All sides is called against the Trailblazers. Repeat third down, and bring it to third and five. Got a little bit Ball too anxious. Forty-two yard line. A little bit too anxious on the blitz there. We saw Devontae Pritchard creeping up, creeping up. Haven't been able to run much from scrimmage against the Trailblazers. I wonder if they're going to run, stick to the run, or if they're going to put it in the air. North hasn't been able to do much of anything. Third and five. Ball was dropped. It's tipped. Should have been picked off, but it came in kind of hot. So I think it was number one. Uh, Drew Casita got his hands on the ball, kind of went right through his hands and distracted the receiver, so brings up a fourth down. Fourth and five. Jake McClure back to receive the punt. It's a nice punt. Well, not quite. Out went out of bounds. Once again, Trailblazers will have excellent field position. I guess one could say it's a nice punt if you're a trailblazer, and we're trailblazer fans. So after that punt, no turnover this time, but they were out three and out. Well, let's see if they can keep their momentum going. They got a little bit further to go this time. Let's see if they this gives Coach Carnelson an opportunity to stay with his game plan. First time they've been on this side of the ball since the very first possession. It's kind of weird that this is the fourth possession now. And they still shot for, for uh, Gardner Edgerton. And still great field position at the 38 yard line. Absolutely. Take a look at um, head coach from Shiny Mission North, Andy Walter, in his first year. As we were talking earlier, he's been a bit of a journeyman. In the district. Well, Coach Walter, this is his first year as a head coach at, over at Sunny Mission North. He came from uh, Bishop Meade, where he was the uh, uh, offensive line coach and a running game coordinator over there. And they were state champions uh, 4A. They've been state champions ever since I can remember, I guess six or seven years in a row. So, uh, you know, but he's a really, he's a, he's a Shiny Mission guy. He was teaching over Shiny Mission East before he got the head coaching job here. And uh, he graduated from Shiny Mission South High School. So he's no, he's no stranger to the district. Second and five from the 43-yard line for our Trailblazers. Oh, Pritchard. Matt stood up. Number 11. Oh, number 11 was Jake in the Schneider. Line. Yes. I think I know Jake Schneider's mother. We worked together, I believe. Oh, really? Yes, I believe so. She'd be glad to give her a, a nice shot. hit. Give her a shout out. Nice. Playing the linebacker role. It's a loss on the play of a yard. Looked almost like it was more than that, but <laughs> good that he was not able to lose any more traction. So let's see what play put the Warner Warner has. Put the Trailblazers to throw the football here. He's going to be looking for, I believe he's going to be looking for Connor, for Ethan Reynolds. He's a sure-handed receiver. Can the drive continue? Nice pass. Pick up. And he's continuing to run. That's number two. He's going in. It looks like he's going in for another touchdown. But there's a flag on the play. Flag all the way back on the 37-yard line. 
Big That's gonna touchdown. be against the pass was by Reynolds, Ethan Reynolds. It's gonna be holding against the Trailblazers, I believe. In spite of the holding, great throw, great pass. You gotta look for your sure-handed guy. And once once Reynolds gets the football, he's, you're not gonna catch it. He's gone. But in this particular case, it's holding against the Trailblazers, and that'll bring him back 10 yards. You really don't think you needed that. I wonder if it was right there on the right side that was coming towards him. But wow. That's holding against the Trailblazers. Third and long. Not sure the Billings was against, but uh, dial it up again. <laughs> it's about what a third and 22, 21, from the 27 yard line. Just like the same formation. That was just a rehearsal, I think. Hopefully I can scream like that again for another touchdown. I think we will. Yeah, there you go. Play. Yep, right down the middle. It's oh, nice hit. Nice hit. Nice catch. Nice catch. And stop was by number nine, Cotter Knowles. Pass to Drew Casita. Yes. Casita. Drew Casita. I always want to call him Casita. I know it. It's Cassidy. Think of Cassidy and Casita. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I hope his parents forgive me. I really do. <laughs> no, you were just fine. I think they know. Hey, we're going for it. Somewhat gutsy, but not really. Not really. You got confidence in your defense. And in your offense. North, North hasn't shown that they can do anything on offense. So, Coach Cornelson calls timeout. <laughs> to see what, how the Shiny Mission North is lined up. Calls timeout. Come up with another play. Well, during this timeout, I want to make sure that we bring to your attention that there's some upcoming events uh, here in Gardner. On Tuesday, October the 13th, volleyball teams, the varsity, JV, ninth grade B team, and sophomore teams will be facing Mill Valley High School here on GEHS TV, Channel 1 and 3. And then boys soccer versus Shawnee Mission South, JV and varsity will be on Channel 2. Uh, Thursday, October the 15th, the ninth grade football will be competing against Shiny Mission Northwest on Channel 4. Volley, volleyball, varsity volleyball, JV, ninth grade, 18, will be hosting Blue Valley Southwest on Channels 1 and 3. So you want to make sure you tune in to GEHS Sports for those various competitions upcoming. This is a nice but Oh, wow. He almost came back and caught it. Just a little underthrown. Great effort, though. Great effort by Ethan Reynolds. And just look, just went on the throne by Ashton Weiner. He got too much air up under it. But, it. but he had his man. Yes. Reynolds was open. He just couldn't come back come back to the football. So, so good field position, the best field position of all night uh, for the North. And we'll see what they can do with this, if they can capitalize from the 41-yard line. First and 10. Today was a pretty warm day, but it feels really nice this evening. Nice run. Hey, roll up the middle. Nice stop. Number two and 28. We're in on the stop for the Trailblazers. That's Reynolds and Anderson. Eric Duarte on the carry. Pickup of six yards, second and four from the 35-yard line. Duarte is their main threat in the backfield. So, Let's see what happens here. Gets the ball again. And that's good enough for their very first first down of the evening. Nice running play. That running play was by number four, Duarte, once again. So first and ten from the 30-yard line. Gardner Edgerton playing a three-man front. Nice hit at the onset right at the line of scrimmage. Pick up over a couple of yards. Great job of penetration by the Trailblazers' defensive line. A couple of guys have sat through to the backfield, and what they do is they open it up for the linebackers to make the play. Just a little bit over a yard for Duarte on that carry. Ball is at the 29-yard line, second and nine. Yeah. 
Nice defensive play. Wow. Number seven, he's working on both sides of the ball today just like he did last week. Nice hit by Pritchard. Devontae Pritchard playing defense well as he tracks down uh, number three, Juan Jones. He wasn't fooled at all on that. So oh, here comes the replay no, on that. Watch the pitch. There's your pitch. And the band linebacker does his job. Wow. Nice sure tackle. Juan Jones was a ball carrier. That was a loss of a yard. So third down and 11. Sorry, loss of two yards. Again. Wow. Great Edgerton, tackle. Gardner Edgerton playing some great defense. Once again, reading the plays. That was number two on the tackle. Ethan Reynolds. Reynolds. Ball was run by, was that number nine? I believe it was number for, nine. For North. North. Cotter Knowles. Edgerton, Gardner Edgerton. Fourth down, this is fourth down territory for sure. Fourth and 13 from the 33 yard line. Roll, nice rollout by the quarterback. No flags on the play. Good defense. Great defensive stop. Great defensive stop for the Trailblazers. Turnover on downs with 48 seconds left in this quarter, the first quarter. A couple of really big plays on that drive, one from uh, Devontae Pritchard and the other from uh, Ethan Reynolds. Both of them outstanding job, not to mention the defensive line. We look at the replay here. Quarterback rollout. Rolls out. Incidental contact on both teams. Ball's kind of uncatchable, so nice, no, no flag. Ball. 28 on the, on the defense out there, Lucas Anderson. 48 seconds, first quarter. See if the Trailblazers are going to try to get something going here or just wait until they switch into the field. Ball is being carried by number one. Nice pickup by Cassida. <laughs> Pickup of about seven yards, yes. Second down and three with the seconds winding down on this first quarter. <clears throat> Will they get, I don't know if you're going to get another playoff before the end of the quarter. They're not. They're going to let the quarter run out. They're going to let the quarter run out. So it's second down and three when the game resumes at the end of this first quarter. We have just a few seconds. We'll start on the other end of the field. But the Trailblazers will begin second and three from the 40-yard line. We're going to take a brief timeout for this brief message. You're watching GEHS-TV, -E MSTC Sports. Shiny Mission North, 21 to nothing. Ball's handed off to Devontae Pritchard. And Devontae makes a very nice run of about 17 yards. Pritchard's had a big night tonight. He scored two touchdowns already, one on the interception and one on a uh, uh, pass play, or one on a running play, I'm, I'm sorry. Edgerton at their own 45-yard line of Shiny Mission North. The keeper is dragged down. And there's Connor a flag Edgerton. called on the play. 
Wonder if there's a horse collar or could be a horse collar call on that. It was a pretty high tackle. Connor Elder on the keeper. You know, Gardner Edgerton did a wonderful job in that first quarter. Even though they, they, they were helped out by Shawnee Mission North with the turnovers that they gave them, uh, but they did a very good job of capitalizing on That's those turnovers. Key. That was key. And you can get the turnovers, but you have to capitalize on them. And they did a wonderful job of capitalizing on those turnovers. Looks like they waved off the flag on the play as we look here at the replay. It was a running play by number 10, dragged down by number 65 for Shawnee Mission North. Number 65, Joshua Brown. And we see a run around the corner here by number. Well, that's a great like, running play. Like Tyler Butash. He scored one touchdown tonight already. Nice running play. Pick up the yards. Brings up a third and short situation, maybe just about a third and two. They did a, job, get, did a very good job that time of getting to the edge. San Mission North tried to string it out, but too much momentum heading downstream for Gardner Erickson. is. Here's we see his, there's your hands off. He reads his blocks. Nice shake on number four. He did a lot by himself. He's the only blue jersey there and a lot of white jerseys in front of him. He did a lot by himself. This is four down territory. No that need ball. for the fourth down. That ball was number almost 17, picked. McClure gets a nice catch. Wow, and more yards after the play. At least about seven, eight yards after the play. Never give up. That ball was almost picked. McClure with some really good hands. Takes away from the defensive back trying to, trying to snatch it out of the air. That's good enough for another trailblazer first down as we look at the replay. Here, yeah. Nice job. Michael Brown should have had that. He was throwing right to him, but McClure's hands are better than his. Took it away from him and then picked up another seven yards after the catch. First and 10 from the 22-yard line. Asher Weiner once again doing a good job leading its offense. Butash. Butash is not going to be touched. Touchdown, Trailblazers! Touchdown, no flags on the play. Tyler Butash with his second touchdown run of the night. 22-yard run up the middle. Great touchdown, McClure. That's McClure going on to get his point after as well. Well, he's just going to take all the points tonight. I love that. We can take that. Well, actually, I think it was Tyler Butash who scored the touchdown. Number 12. I'm sorry. That's number 12. There that's right, go. Butash. And look at, the, look at that hole. I can run through that hole. That hole and no one touches him. Calm down, Chuck. By himself. Chuck, I've seen you running. I don't know if you can get, get, get through well, that hole quite. I, I could. Well, you're probably right. <laughs> I hey, neither can I. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it this way. That's why we're upstairs and they're downstairs. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but and Tyler, I, I Tyler Butash having a night. He and Devontae Pritchard having a great night. They both scored two touchdowns so far. And this offensive line for Gardner Edgerton is just dominating. Yes. They are dominating Shiny Mission North so right now. So true. So true. And I do apologize for that mistake. I had McClure on the running, on the catch <laughs> play. <clears throat> was still on my mind. But that was a great play by number 12, Butash. to kick off so we're just only just a little bit shy of two minutes. Oh there's a big hole. Quarter. There's a big hole. Can the kicker stop? Yes he will. Eric Duarte. That was a nice stop by number 17 McClure. McClure got his name called anyway didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it was a nice stop by him. Eric Duarte Shiny Mission North. Big return up the middle. Great blocking here on the return team. He's taking his time, sees the hole, goes right up the middle. Nice and there's no one there. The only one available is number 17, McClure. Didn't give up on the play, so first and 10 from the 43-yard line. Nice end around. Number nine picks up some good yardage. 
for North. That ball carrier was Carter Knowles. Well, Shawnee Mission North has a running game. I mean, last week they lost 28-6 to to Olathe East, uh, but Olathe East is a very good football team. And the week before that, they were shut out by Shawnee Mission Northwest. Uh, but their first victory, and we have to remember, Shawnee Mission North, Shawnee Mission North is the team that they, they were winless last year. They didn't win any ball games, and they won their first game this year. They beat Turner High School 48 to 49 to nothing. So uh, they are capable, if they can put it all together, they're capable of, of playing some good football. We're going to see what they can do with this drive. Down by four scores, their, their receiver wasn't even aware that the ball was coming his way. Number one was uh, Cassida was defending that play against number 12. It looked like that play didn't really have a chance from the start. It, it was really like did. Some confusion in the backfield, and and I just don't think the quarterback gave him receiver time. He had, you know, Isaiah Beck, he had plenty of time. I think he got a little spooked. So we look here at the replay. Yeah, he got a little spooked. He had some time, but he still took a nice hit. He, he had some pressure. He had someone right in the gut. He took a nice hit. Uh, uh, that's it's either false start or it's an offside. Depending on if number 12 was on the they're line. Gonna they're going to call that offside against the defense. Well, they tricked them and me. Looks like it's just shy of the first down marker. So third and one. <clears throat> This is two drives that they started with the ball on. They've gotten the ball on the other side of the 50-yard line. And that running play, had it been third and six, probably would have been able to stop it. But just like, with one yard, that was a nice little pickup. Like, a lot easier to pick up a third down and one than it is a third down and six. Once again, your guy, Duarte, <clears throat> that you mentioned earlier, in the broadcast. So that's first and 10 from the 44-yard line. Can the Trailblazers stop and keep keep the zero on the board for North? <clears throat> nice stop. Nice stop. Again, they hand the ball off to Duarte. They're, they're testing that middle of that line, but that Gardner Edgerton front three and the linebackers are doing a great job. The front three are stacking people up and the linebackers are coming in and making the plays. You got Ozzy Pogue up there, and you've got Dawson Williams. These guys are having a good game. You know, they stack them up in the middle here. They're doing a good job of getting low. 42 pretty much had that from the start. Chest Again, up, nice little run around. Out. We got a flag. I wonder if there's a holding there. or a legal block. It's probably holding, but once again, the linebackers are playing great football for, for the Trailblazers. I agree. That's holding. It's going to march them back 10 yards. They're getting out their blocks. They're reading well, and they're, they're getting out there, and they're making plays. Noted earlier how um, the Gardner Edgerton, how the front three, they get low, and they're getting up underneath the offensive linemen, which is forcing them to stand up, which, but their hands are down, which gives the, the, the linebackers an opportunity to get in and make the plays, and that's exactly what's happening. So that front three, they're playing very well. So that's going to be a second down and long, starting at the 43-yard line. Second and 23, it was on the 44-yard line of Gordon Edgerton. Now it's on their 43-yard line for Shawnee Mission North. Second and 23. Oh, It's so confusing when you see number three running. <laughs> well, what we got is we got offsides Another on offsides. the defense. They were blitzing. There's a move on number three that Juan Jones keeps doing, and I think that keeps triggering. Uh, the defensive players, defensive line of the Trailblazers. Could be, but I think they're anxious too. They were, they were, they were about to blitz. They want to hit somebody. <laughs> they want to hit somebody. <laughs> the blitz was coming. That's all. That's football they're for inching you. Inching up, inching up, inching up, and just got to time it just right. That's the key to your blitz: timing it just right. With the ball being on the ground, the clock is running. He's run down from behind. Is that McClure in on that tackle? Jake McClure running from, chasing him down from behind. Yeah. And in there on the, also Pritchard in on the tackle. And then you see number one, Cassidy, in on there. So yeah, yeah that, that, the trio. Exactly. <laughs> the linebacker trio. They're there doing we go. They're having a good time tonight. 
third down, third and 16. The ball is at midfield. I'm so happy that you've joined us here on GEHS TV, MSTC Sports. You know, the coach, Kern Nelson, he has to be just ecstatic the way his defense has played this first half and his offense. But the offense was helped out by Shawnee Mission North. But his defense has played very well, and he's got to be ecstatic about that. We have a timeout, looks time like. Out. I mentioned, uh, you know, Coach uh, Corey Nelson before. You know, I, I kind of spotlighted him last week, and um, I mean, he's, he's got a history of success. He comes from a long line of success, as a matter of fact. And um, I need to um, just kind of remind people that he, he's also not just a um, uh, the football coach here. He's also the track and field coach as well, and uh, or he's assistant track and field coach. And uh, he's got some um, accolades when it comes to that. He's um, Oh, man, what else? Has he, he's, he's been honored as the Midwest Track and Field Coach of the Year. And, you know, that's way back in 2011, but he's been a winner everywhere he goes. Um, he came to Gardner Edgerton from Hutchinson High School, where he was a uh, the four, he was a five, uh, he was a uh, runner-up, state, uh, 6A state runner-up in 2014 at Hutchinson High School. He was there for four years before he came here. So, um, you know, he brought his winning ways with him, brings his, brings his winning style, brings his winning coaching, brings his winning attitude uh, to the to the uh, Trailblazers, and um, he just continues the tradition that they've had here at Gardner Edgerton. Well, he's definitely continued some success. <clears throat> They're sitting at a rep the record of three and one. We assume that we'll end the evening at four and one. <laughs> at Only this loss to Olathe North, <clears throat> the mighty powerful Olathe North Wilds. We see a run up the middle. Nice stop to save a first down and a potential touchdown. That ball was run by number four. Nick Duarte. And that ball was stopped by number one. Cassida. There's great play running up the middle. Fourth and Nick, four. Nick Duarte is one of those, the two-headed monster we were talking about earlier. Are they going to go back to him? And we definitely don't want to give them the first down. So we need to not be fooled. He's only got three sec, two seconds on the play clock. Nice stop. Nice hit initially. And a nice stop overall. Turnover on downs. Excellent job, Trailblazers. Once again, that, that defensive front, that de the entire defense is playing an outstanding football game for the Trailblazers. As we look at the replay here. here. Obviously, it's a confusion on the north side. There's a handoff, penetration, and here come the linebackers. Number 55, Gus Davis, is in on that tackle. Outstanding. Had so, a little help from uh, Ethan Reynolds. Yes, we, yes, he did. First and 10 from the 36-yard line, Trailblazers. Passing play. He's got him. Got him wide open. Got his big tight end. Nice catch by number 47, Austin Weiner. How many Little brother goes to big brother. <laughs> how many, I like that. How many times do you think they practiced that in the backyard? <laughs> and they've got a father who's an athlete. Exactly. So Former NFL player. Yeah, I think mom may have drawn that one up, though. That oh, was, okay. I okay. think mom may have drawn that one up. That was a great pass. That was great protection. And younger brother hits his older brother. Out in the flat for a nice game. Really pretty, really pretty play. But that was also a great, a great play with the offensive line. Absolutely. And <laughs> Austin's a big target, though. He's 6'7. He shouldn't have missed him. 6'7 at 220, 226. That's not a play you do often, but my goodness, that was pretty. <clears throat> nice pickup on the play, on the running play. They're doing Gardner Edgerton doing a wonderful job of mixing up their plays. <laughs> kind of got North on their heels. They're not, sure, they're not sure what's coming. And if you are Edgerton, Gardner Edgerton, you just want the clock to keep running. This is a nice drive that started at their own 36-yard line. We're now at the 27-yard line. The threat to, pl threat to score. To, hand off to Butash again. Oh, Butash wow. Nice hard. spin play. Oh, 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 oh. Woo, that's pretty. That's almost as pretty as me, Holmes. 
<laughs> almost. <laughs> Not quite, but hey, almost. There you go. Nice pickup play by Butash. That's a first down. Tyler's been running hard tonight. That was a nice sweep. As we look here on the replay. As I like to call it, student body left. Picks his hole. Nice block. <laughs> you like that there? sound effect. Yeah. There we go. He got a nice block out there from his fullback, number 32, Carter Dewey. First and ten. Nice little run by number 15. His name's called the first time, Garrett Bergman. Yeah. I think um, Trailblazers have found something they like on the left side of their offensive line. They're able to control that right side of that defensive line uh, for Shawnee Mission North, and they're just having their way over there. <laughs> Pick up a three yards, second and seven from the 12. You got to look for them to throw the football here just to keep Shawnee Mission North on their toes as to what's coming, keep them confused. I would look for uh, Casita out here on the left. And I'm wrong, so they give the Butash. Why not? Tyler's having a great ball game. Nice pickup. That's gonna be good enough for another first down. Pickup of 11 yards. That's first and goal at the four yard line. Tyler Butash having a night. Great run. Offensive line blowing people off the football. Watch this offensive line. Look at this push. Look at that push. There's no one over there. Did a very good job of collapsing on the right side of the collapse on the right side of the line and giving Tyler some room to run. And there's the play up the middle. And it looks like, like he took it right on in. That's a touchdown, Trailblazers. That's to the fullback. Number 32. That was Carter Dewey. Carter Dewey. As we look at the Trailblazer marching band led by my good friend and former classmate, marching Jayhawk, Mr. Will Biggs. I love the band, especially on homecoming. Oh, yeah. Playing after? Will's a great trombone player <laughs> in the uh, marching band, KU marching band, KU pep bands. I wasn't quite as good on my mellophone as he was on his trombone. <laughs> Look forward to being able to interview him sometime soon. Here we are at 35 to nothing. Here's that play again. As we watch the fullback take the ball Look, right up the middle. No one there to stop him. I think someone tried to stop him. He just burled his way right through him. That was Diego Juarez. Kind of overshot him a little bit, but he had a shot, but he missed him. But that offensive line for Gardner Edgerton is just doing it. Phenomenal job. They're doing a fantastic job up front. And they're blowing Shiny Mission North off the football. They got it confused. They can play, they can pretty much run whatever they want to run. And they apparently they haven't figured out what's going to happen on the offensive side of the ball yet. Shiny Mission North has them. So absolutely. They're in for a long, long night if they can't figure out what's going on. We want to thank Olathe Health Sports Medicine for providing sports medicine and the athletic trainers for the scholar athletes. Another great partnership with Gardner Edgerton School District. I think that one's going all the way to the end zone, though. Since and taking that back. At halftime, we will be ready for homecoming. This is homecoming night, and we will celebrate those students and scholars who uh, have been nominated and voted on by their classmates. No homecoming dance, I don't believe. I don't think anyone's having a homecoming dance, but uh, it's still nonetheless nice to be able to celebrate homecoming. Yeah, homecoming in the COVID era. Not quite the same. Not quite everything. <laughs> Nothing is quite the same. Not quite the same. But you know, kids, they'll find a way to have a good time. That's what they do. Yes, yes, yes. As we've said before, oh, nice sack. Nice sack. That's Jake McClure coming off the end. Run the quarterback down from behind. He came across untouched. Jake McClure's having a very good defensive ball game. Here he comes as he crashes down. No one there to touch him. 
And he just runs him down from behind. Stealth. Isaiah Beck didn't know what hit him. <laughs> <laughs> or who. <laughs> or who was coming. That's a loss of one yard on that sack. The ball is at the 19-yard line, second and 11. You know, our scholars, students are resilient, and teachers have been resilient. Absolutely. I think you cannot uh, let that go on unsaid or unstated. It's a pretty tough job. It's a tough job as a teacher. Uh, timeout is on the field uh, by Shawnee Mission North. But as I was saying, it's tough already exactly. that you're no longer in person with the students. You're learning new technology. You're learning a new platform. You're trying to make sure you put in troubleshoot um, as we were able to hear from Mr. Coppola, mm -hmm. uh, who is the uh, IT director for, uh, for Gardner Edgerton. And so uh, he spoke to us at the very beginning of the game. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot that goes on. Yes, and so, um, you know, the teachers then also have to rethink how do we engage students from a remote stance? Exactly. How do we keep them engaged? How do we make sure that they turn in the homework? How do we make sure that they understand the homework? And oh, and then there's the mental, the social, emotional side of our students that we, we're concerned about. And because we're in a field where, as I say, we don't deal with sprockets. <laughs> right. We don't just put things off a conveyor belt. We deal with children, children. in real lives. That's right. So the teachers and staff members are always concerned about our scholars and uh, how they're doing and their welfare. So so a lot goes on. Another sack. Wow. Ooh, that was Hayden Dwyer, just Dyer coming in this time. Uh, mental note to the North quarterback and to the line. You might want to block somebody. You might want to block someone. <laughs> the Trailblazers are blazing through that offensive line. You might want to hit somebody. I guess, I guess if I'm a, the quarterback, if I guess I'm, if I'm a He's walking Isaiah, off. Isaiah Beck, I'm like, you know, this would be nice, for him, but here he comes off the end. Off the, nobody there. Well, Dwyer, we see Dwyer. number four. Nobody there. Number four is just right in yeah. on him. Dyer. I mean, Dyer just, hey, if, you, if you're not going to block me, I'm going to hit somebody. Third and 18 from the 12-yard line. A minute and 25 seconds left in the game. I mean, in the first half. Nice run up the middle to pick up at least about 10 yards. Kind of 10 yards, that was Duarte. But still... Still, it is fourth and nine, or fourth and ten, really. Fourth and ten. Well, we talked about the two-headed monster earlier, but so far only one head has showed up, and, and it's, it's been really tough for him Yes, because he's got to run so far and, and try to make things happen on his own. So it's uh, been a tough night for the running game. And we look at nice our crowd. faithful fans. And because of COVID-19, not as many people can join us. So many tickets are given to uh, the families uh, to attend. So anyone that's here, they are definitely fortunate. There's a timeout on the field called by North. There are also some North fans on the other side, opposite side of the field, come out to support their scholar athletes. Yeah. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, North last year did not win a football game as we see the Homecoming court start Homecoming to gather. Court, that's right. Well, they did not win a football game last year, and they won their first game of the season this year, so they were high hopes. And uh, uh, Coach Walter, he, he brought a, a different type of philosophy over to North because they, they've had some tough seasons the past few seasons. So he brought a different philosophy over, and he showed up in their first game against Turner. Uh, but they have to continue to work hard. They have to continue. They're, they're a young team also. Uh, they have some, a few seniors, mostly juniors, uh, as we're watching Duarte run, number four, he's a junior. He'll be back next year. Um, they've got their, um, uh, even their, uh, uh, their quarterback, Isaiah Beck. He's just a junior, so he'll be back next year. So he's got a good nucleus there. He just needs to, uh, they just need to continue to work hard. There's a punt on the play. Here or an attempt. They come, they're going to get to that oh, one almost. Almost blocked. He was there. Oh, it takes a nice Gardner Edgerton roll. Those He's, punts, those are dangerous. Yeah, they are. Because if, you know, if, you, if you have your back to the ball and the ball actually hits you in the back, it's a, it's a live ball. We almost saw the other night, Monday night, when the Chiefs were playing the ball. Thankfully, the ball ran, ran in, in between his legs. Exactly. Almost a very costly situation that could have turned the tide of that game. Absolutely. But, of course, our Kansas City Chiefs are still undefeated. <laughs> they should be. <laughs> Best team in the league. <laughs> there we go. 
Look at that throw. That's a nice, nice throw. Pass. Across the field. That is not an easy throw for anybody to make. And Asher Weiner threw that like it was nothing. That's, that is the toughest throw to make for a quarterback in any league. Quarterback in professional football or college football to throw that ball across the field. Nice catch by Cassida. With some zip on it, too. Yes, it was. Well, I said, this is a nice throw. He sets up good footwork, steps back, throws it out there. That's a nice throw. That's a good job. Let's see if we're going to try to put some more points on the board here before halftime. 17.1 seconds left. They're already up 35 to nothing. So, uh, will they air it out further down the field? I think they're going to throw it. If they want to score again, they will. They still have two timeouts left, I believe, right? Yes, they do. So they don't have to go to the end zone. They got a really good field goal kicker in, uh, uh, in McClure. So. Second and four from the 32. Pressure on the ball. Oh, ball oh, almost, almost intercepted. Off. Tipped off, tipped by number 87 for North. <clears throat> Darius Camo. I said it correctly. Good job, man. Got a little, thought it looked French. Got a little Cajun, Cajun French in there. There we go. Huh. So third and four. North did a good job that time of rushing. They were trying to set the screen up, but got, two, got their hands up, knocked it down. Good play call. Screen would have worked. 13 and a half seconds remaining in this first half. <clears throat> it's been all trailblazers, just 35 to nothing. The band is striking up for sure. Look for oh, time out time by out on the field. Coach Carnelson is 13 and a half seconds left. You watch, watch them go deep. I think they're going to go for the end zone on this pass here. You know, it's, it's one of those where you're, you're playing a, you're playing an excellent football game. The team you're playing again is is they're not that they're not that good yet, and uh, uh, sportsmanship comes into play. But then at the same time. Coach Carnelson is also teaching his boys. He's teaching his, his kids how to play good, tough, hard-nosed football. So they're going to go to the field goal here. Well, we're going to see. That's going to be a nice uh, 32, 42-yard attempt, 40, 49-yard attempt. Yeah, that will be a 49-yard yeah. attempt. There's the kick. It's line drive. It's Just so good. shy. Off to the left, but that's all right. 8.9 seconds to go. We see the Trailblazers are still leading 35 to nothing. Turnover on downs. I'm thinking that North will just sit on this. And, and go back in halftime and try to regroup. Regroup. <laughs> they can make this a respectable game. <laughs> this is what we hope to make this a respectable game. Or at least... For the sake of Shawnee Mission North, we want to be kind host. We don't want to. We don't want to be rude to them. We want to send them back, so they'll come back again. <laughs> but definitely, we are in control of this game. Nice little running play again, number four. There they go. Stopped up the middle. That was number two Reynolds on that stop. <clears throat> Yeah, Corte's running well. He's got some big holes. He's, he's made some really good runs tonight. As I said, he's a junior, so he'll be back next year. And this, and for both teams, both both teams, this is the kind of whipping that both teams want to remember. And you keep on ticking. Hey, at the end of a full half, it is 35 Trailblazers, Shawnee Mission North, zero. You're, we're here at Gardner Edgerton District Complex. You're watching GEHS TV brought to you by MSTC Sports. We will be back for Homecoming Halftime. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Adam Winters, the Kansas Highway Patrol. The Kansas Highway Patrol public resource officers across the great state of Kansas have a message for you. Three out of every four car seats are installed incorrectly. Please read your owner's manual and vehicle manual to learn how to install your car seat correctly. When driving on Kansas highways, and you see a trooper in a safety vest, and you see the orange cones, you're in a construction zone. Please remember, slow down, don't drive distracted, and move over, it's Kansas law. Now that you've seen us, make sure you see us and all other first responders and road workers. Move over.
hey, we get an opportunity to see the homecoming court and to also learn who the king and queens are. So the king candidates for this evening are Drew Cassida, Hayden Dyer, Mason Kindler, Devontae Pritchard, and Quentin Wallion. The queen candidates are Macy Beasley, Ashlyn Bell, Mallory Bolden, Taylor Nichols, and Sydney Oyer. We're going to turn it over to the public address announcer to find Macy out Beasley who our victors Cassidy. will be. Macy is the daughter of Ryan and Maria Beasley and sister to Madison, Carter, Morgan, and Claire Beasley. Her GEHS activities have included girls' tennis and Madrigal's choir. Macy's plans for after high school are to move to Idaho and go to BYU, Idaho. Her favorite moment as a Blazer was dressing up and going to every Friday night football game. The person Macy looks up to the most is her sister Morgan. She said, quote, she was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and still continues to stay tough and do what she loves, end quote. When she was asked what the best advice that she's ever received was, Macy replied, life is as fun as you make it. After graduation, what Macy will miss the most is the huge student section and the spirit the school brings every game. Miss Macy Beasley. And up next, we have Drew Cassida. Drew is the son of Robert and Stacy Cassida and brother to Colton, Brett, and Dawson. Drew has been involved in football, basketball, and track at GEHS. He plans to go to college after high school, but doesn't know what he would like to major in just yet. The favorite moment as a Blazer, Drew describes as, quote, honestly, my whole sophomore football season, just being able to play with my brother and going undefeated, end quote. The role model Drew looks up to the most is his dad because he continues to push him throughout everything he's done and never lets me give up, he says. Drew said the best advice he's ever received is, life is a storm that will test you relentlessly. Don't wait for calm waters that may never arrive. Embrace the storm and learn to sail the raging sea, end quote. And what Drew will miss the most after graduation are seen as friends, coaches, and teachers every day, Mr. Drew Cassida. Our next couple is Ashlyn Bell and Hayden Dyer. Ashlyn is the daughter of Chantel and Chris Bell and sister to Avery. Ashlyn has been involved in varsity cross country and track here at GHS. After graduation, Ashlyn plans to attend Pitt State University and major in nursing. Her favorite moment from high school was every moment, but the football games were always something she looked forward to attending. It was always so fun being around the other students and cheering on the football team, she says. Ashlyn says the biggest role model is her mom. Quote, she's always inspired me to be the best me that I can be, and I hope one day I can be the woman that she is, end quote. The best advice someone ever gave Ashlyn was to live in the moment and to focus on the things that make her happy. She said, after graduation, I'm going to miss seeing my friends that I've grown up with over the years, and I'm also going to miss the laughs and memories I shared in the hallways of GEHS. Miss Ashlyn Bell. Our next King candidate is Hayden Dyer. Hayden is the son of Shauna and Ray Dyer, and brother to Michaela. At GHS, Hayden was involved in Link Crew, varsity football, and baseball. After graduation, Hayden plans to play baseball and major in sports management. His favorite moment from high school was his freshman year baseball ritual. The person Hayden looks up to the most are his parents, and he said, quote, they push me to be the best athlete that I can be, end quote. The best advice that he has received is hit the ball. Hayden said the things that he will miss the most after graduating is playing sports with his brothers, Mr. Hayden Dyer. Our next candidates are Mallory Bowden and Mason Kindler. Mallory is the daughter of Scott and Teresa Bowden and sister to Kylie Crowder and Joey Rindle. Mallory's high school activities include cross country, track and field, and National Honor Society. Next year, Mallory plans to continue her academic and running career at Northwestern Oklahoma State University and then go into nursing school. She said her favorite moment as a blazer was, quote, when I would walk through the hallways during passing periods and be able to see all of my friendly faces of peers and friends and teachers, end quote. Mallory looks up the most to Jim Anderson because he's always, he always pushes me, she said, to be the best I can be, and he never lets me give up. He works hard through every situation he's faced, and yet he never gives up. The best advice that she's ever received came from her mom, who said, don't stress about the things around you. Instead, look at the positives around you and carry those positives in your heart. Mallory said the thing that she will miss the most about GHS after graduating will be her teachers, coaches, friends, and the memories that have built her into the person she is today, Miss Mallory Bowden. And your next King candidate is Mason Kindler. 
Mason is the son of Josh and Jen Kindler. While at GEHS, he has participated in multiple band activities, Drumline, Mr. GHS, National Honor Society, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, FBLA, the Drone Tech Club, and the Ping Pong Club. Mason's plans after graduation are to attend college at Kansas State, pursue a career in computer engineering, and minor in leadership. His favorite moment as a blazer was cheering for the Powderpuff Girls. Mason's role model has been his dad because he is a great leader and someone who always works hard for the things he wants in life. Mason says he hopes to be a great father like him someday. The best advice Mason has ever received was, quote, to be myself because everyone else is already taken. The things that Mason will miss the most after leaving GHS is the high school atmosphere at the football games and the pep assemblies. Mr. Mason Kindler. And now we have Taylor Nichols and Devontae Pritchard. Our next queen candidate is Taylor Nichols. Taylor is the daughter of Darren and Risha Nichols and sister to Blake. After graduating from GEHS, she plans on going to Pitt State or Johnson County Community College, and she wants to become a pediatric nurse. Taylor's favorite moment as a blazer, she said, was, quote, well, it would have to be getting to do junior powder puff with all my friends. Although we didn't win, we had a blast. The role model she looks up to the most is her mom because no matter what she's going through, she's always there for everyone. The best advice Taylor has ever received is, quote, be kind to everyone because you never know what they are going through, end quote. After graduating high school, Taylor said she, the thing that she will miss the most is being in the student section at the football games, Miss Taylor Nichols. And up next, we have Devontae Pritchard, a.k.a. D-Train. Devontae is the son of Daniel and Joel Allen, brother to Daquan and Dana, and JJ. Devontae is involved in football and track, and after graduating from GHS, he plans to become a Wildcat at Kansas State as both a student and football player, and is as yet undecided on a major right now. His favorite blazer moment was going to school dances because, quote, it's the night that everyone gets hype. Lots of dancing going on, and you know, I was the best at dancing, end quote. Devontae most looks up to GHS teacher and coach Jason Radel. Devontae says about Coach Radel, ever since I walked into this high school, he's always been there for me. He's always had my back for everything. He always would advocate for me, and he taught me over a million valuable lessons that have made me into the young adult that I am, and I would keep these lessons with me for the rest of my life. I will be forever grateful to him and many others, end quote. The best advice he's ever received is, quote, even through the hardest and the easiest of times, you have to give 100% effort no matter what, end quote. Devontae will miss Friday Night Lights, suiting up with his guys and going to battle with his brothers for two and a half hours, and the amazing people he's met on his journey within these four years, and how close to a family this school has been for him. Mr. Devontae Pritchard. And our final royal couple this evening are Sydney Oyer and Quentin Wallian. Sydney is the daughter of Jan and Doug Oyer, sister to Andrea Williams, and brother-in-law, Austin Williams. Activities that Sydney uh, was involved in, currently involved in, are student council and Rotary Youth Exchange. After graduation, Sydney plans to go to Johnson County Community College for two years and then off to KU to study psychology. Her favorite moment as a blazer, she said, was, quote, my very first pep assembly as a freshman. Coach Diener pretended to be resuscitated to bring GE football back to life. A person that she looks up to the most as a role model is her sister because, quote, she's the smartest, kindest, most beautiful soul that she knows. She prays that she is half of what her sister is today. The best advice Sydney has ever received is, quote, you can't live a full life on an empty stomach. When asked what she will miss the most after leaving GHS, Sydney says, I will miss the friendships with my teachers and peers. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Sydney Oyer. And last but not least, Quentin Wallian. Quentin is the son of Craig and Britt Wallian and brother to Parker and Olivia. He has been involved with cross country, track, student council since sophomore year, and now is the senior class president. He is also a part of National Honor Society and Link Crew. Quentin is not sure which college he plans to attend, but he would like to continue to run and major in sports nutrition. His favorite moment as a Blazer was when our 2019 track and field team went undefeated and won the 6A state championship. He said he was very lucky to be a part of that team, and it was amazing to see everyone's hard work and dedication pay off. 
the role model that Quentin looks up to the most is head cross-country coach Larry Ward. Quote, he's always calm and, and content no matter the situation. I hope one day I can be as content in life as him. And the best advice that Quentin has received from was actually from Coach Ward, who said, only athletes determine how hard the workout is. Quentin says that's the best advice because it not only applies to running, but everything. The more effort you put in, the better the result. Quentin will miss seeing the people he grew up with every day after he graduates this high school. And also, he'll miss the teachers because they've all made an impact on his life. Mr. Quentin Wallian. And we have some special guests returning this evening. Former Queen Isabella De Francisco and former King Evan Orozco. Isabella is currently attending Pittsburgh State University and studying elementary education. She said that she's so glad that even with COVID being a part of this year, that she was able to come back and see some of her best friends stand on the field after being nominated for homecoming court. And Evan is currently attending Kansas State University and is studying secondary education with a focus in social studies. He's excited to be back in Gardner and proud to see his hometown come together and celebrate the students and seniors in Trailblazer football. And Evan says, hang tough Blazers, especially the seniors. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, the 2020 GEHS homecoming king and queen are Devontae Pritchard and Macy Beasley. Trailblazer fans, one more time, by a round of applause and cheers, let's congratulate these outstanding representatives of this high school and our community. Thank you, seniors. Welcome back. This is homecoming night. Congratulations to our queen, Miss uh, Macy Beasley, and the king, Devontae Pritchard. In fact, you'll hear his name here in just a moment. We're going to go through some of the first half action as we, uh, when we come back from this brief commercial break. So you're watching GEHS TV, MSTC Sports. We'll be right back after this message. to definitely take you through some of our highlights. We had some amazing highlights at the end of one half, 35 to nothing. But how did we get there? There were some very quick uh, plays. I believe in less than three minutes, we had three scores. So we're gonna look at our first touchdown play of the night. As we see number 12, we see number 12, Butash, at the end around, and he goes in for the touchdown. That was the third play of the game. 
So just like that, touchdown Trailblazers. And then on the ensuing possession, number four gets in with a deflection. That was Dyer, and the ball is picked off for a pick six by Pritchard, our homecoming king. That was the second touchdown of the night. After that, the next possession, there was a fumble, and the Trailblazers, they took care of the rest. Pritchard once again takes it in for the short touchdown gain, and after that, it was 21 to nothing. A very quick, quick threat. And then, of course, look on the next possession, a really nice pickup play here that I believe was called a touchdown, may have been called back. That was a nice play by number two, Reynolds. Came back for that play. And that was a nice scoring play. Daylight in front of him. Final touchdown of the half, number 32, the fullback. He runs in for a short gain and goes in for the touchdown. So that is our first half scoring plays, 35 to nothing. Sorry we don't have anything else to show you on the north side, but we're going to take a quick commercial break as we look at the marching trailblazers under the direction of Mr. Will Biggs. We'll be right back after this brief message. to the game for Shawnee Mission North? <laughs> well, <laughs> I think the keys to the game may have gone right out the window as far as Shawnee Mission North is concerned. Uh, the, the key for them in the second half, they got to score points. <laughs> they got to hold on to the football, and they got to score points. Okay. They, and they have to score, They not only score points, but they have to hold on to the football. They have to establish some kind of rhythm on offense. And they have to be able to stop Gardner Everton on defense. And so far, they haven't been able to do anything. We're not sure what's going on uh, with, with Gardner Edgerton when it comes to, uh, they, they have no idea what they're, what they're about to do. They're completely, completely lost uh, from what I've seen so far on the field. So for Gardner Edgerton, the second, uh, for the second half, 
they need to do is they need to keep their foot on their, keep their foot on their throat. Coach Carnelson, he's got a young team, and you're going to get games like this where you blow people out. But you need to make sure that you keep your focus, you keep your energy, and you stay too true to yourself and play your type of football game because there are going to be other games that are not going to be this simple. They're not going to be this easy. So enjoy it while you can, but also remember, you still got to maintain your focus. You got to run your game plan, stay on your blocks, make your catches, run the daylight. So it's 35 to nothing. I mean, the best that they can do is to try to keep, I mean, at least is to try to keep the distance between them and the Trailblazers at 35. Uh, but uh, we also saw two quick turnovers, I mean, deep into the Trailblazers' territory. They have to hold on to the, they have to take better care of the football. And uh, those two turnovers, those actual three turnovers, really bit them hard. Yeah. Bit them very hard. So, um, you know, if, if you're a defensive coordinator on the gardner Edgerton side, every, D, every D.C., they love a shutout. Yeah. So you're pitching a shutout right now. And the last thing you want to do is give up points. So that's what you talk to your defense about. You stay after them. You keep, you keep running after them. And on the offensive side for Shiny Mission North, the worst thing for an offensive coordinator is to be shut out. So he's going to be on them. They're going to have to do something. They, they have to be able to establish the run. They were able to run the ball a little bit, but they, but they find themselves in holes by getting penalties, knocking them back five, five yards or 15 yards. Oh, they uh, they uh, giving up sacks with blocking assignments. So they've got a lot to work on. They're a young, young, young team with a first-year head coach that's his, in his first year, too. So he's got a lot to work with as well, but he's got a lot of work to do. Well, we're getting ready to start second half of homecoming. Trailblazers are kicking off to North. So I guess I really said something different. North could, at the very least, get it to within 28. One play at a time. Decent little carry out just past the 35-yard line, around the 36-37, to start their first set of downs this half. You know, at halftime we had the, uh, the homecoming ceremony, but you also have a teacher that was named uh, for a special award. Yes, we did, and we're going to make sure that we focus in on that Miss Meg Hunting, uh, who is the gifted teacher. She is this week's uh, great employee serving the district, the GESD winner, and we're going to speak more about her in just a moment after this play as we want to make sure that we feature the fine educators here in Gardner Edgerton. So first and ten. First and 10 from the 25-yard line, and looks like no gain on the play. Well, once again, the gardner Edgerton they throw up strong up the middle. For some reason, I'll let the North thinks they can really run up the middle on this team, and so far they have not been able to do it. East Kansas. Oh, the defense picked that up solidly. Great job. They are Great job. The linebackers are just playing outstanding football. That was 55. Gus Davis in on that play to finish it. Out there with the homecoming king, Devontae Pritchard. Third down, third and 12. North has, has not been able to do anything tonight. They can't get any rhythm going. They can't get anything going offensively. I think they picked up their last, their first first down. I believe that last drive that they had, the last full drive they had before the half. <clears throat> I think they've only been on the other side of the 50-yard line once. Yeah, I think twice. Yeah, they Maybe got twice. over twice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the starts was the missed field goal. But that's it. Nice passing play. It's definitely one of the biggest passing plays, longest passing plays of the game so far for North. That pass was completed to number 15. Shawnee Mission North. Nate Jackson? Nate Jackson. I don't think the ball was intended for Nate Jackson. I think one of his other receivers had gone up and missed it, but Jackson doing a very good job of keeping his concentration. Isaiah Beck goes back, gets some pretty good protection, able to get downfield, overthrows number three, number uh, which is uh, Juan Jones. But uh, Jackson says, Jackson, I'll take it. Jackson so says, I'll coach. take it. So first and 10. 
best pay of the night so far for Shining Mission North. 47 yard line. Nice initial hit. Stopped him a little bit and number 47 was able to come in and hit the tackle. So that was a tackle by Austin Weiner. We saw him have a big pass, a big play earlier from the connection between he and his brother. And his brother. Carter Edison's run defense has been excellent tonight. They've given up a couple big plays, but nothing hurt them because they were long fourth, third down plays. So, but other than that, they, they have really played very well defensively. We're at nine minutes and 20 seconds. At this point in the first half, I believe they had already scored <laughs> twice at least. Nice tackle. That was McClure in on that defensive play. So they're not letting up. No, you know, you, you look at these guys, and last week when, as, when they played Olathe North, Olathe North was so much bigger on the defense, on the offensive side of the ball. And when you're playing both ways, offense and defense, in a, in a tight ball game, and you got one team, they're just pounding and pounding and pounding and pounding on you, as Olathe North was doing last week. You know, the Trailblazers did a very good job for the first half of the football game. They came out in, in the third quarter, and, and they tried the same things, but North was just so big, they just, they just wore them out. But here, they are just dominating North Shining Mission North. Oh. That ball was tipped. That ball was tipped, and Isaiah Beck took a shot. Nice pressure. Ethan Reynolds lays him out after the pass. No flags. The pass was intended for number 15, Nate Jackson. This time he was unsuccessful in his bid. Fourth down. Fourth and seven from the 50, or just just shy of the 50-yard line. It looks like they're yeah, setting watch, up for a punt. Watch this hit that Beck takes. Ethan Reynolds All lays legal. him out. Very legal, very <laughs> legal. Got a flag down. Oh. False start is called against Shawnee Mission North, and they probably are very happy that they got that false start as we saw the punt blocked. You know, Austin Weiner, you know, he's a senior. He's 6'7". He can't, you, you can't let him come in untouched. He's going <laughs> to block everything that comes in. He came in untouched. It's a big guy. He's 6'7". And his, his brother, who's a quarterback, he's not a little guy either. He's, but he's only a freshman. And he's 6'5". So he's not finished growing yet either. You know what else I noticed last week? We saw a lot of high snaps. Do you recall that? Yes. And it seems like tonight we have not seen one high snap on the Trailblazer side. So whatever that 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 disconnect was last week, Coach Cornelson and his team and his staff, they worked it out. Offensive they took coordinator, care of that they, they took problem. care of that. Yes, they did. So, like a good week of practice. talked last week too there were a lot of personal foul penalties against both teams and they did and Carter uh, had a lot of personal fouls so I'm sure there were some extra wind sprints that were run by some individuals and mm -hmm. right now we've had a really clean ball game early on if you recall in that game a lot of the calls were called against Olathe North uh, those personal foul yep and then it became contagious so we had some of our own uh, some of our own <laughs> Instances that was a nice running play by number 15 Bergman. It's his second name being called tonight, Garrett Bergman. Nice counter run, big hole up the middle. And this offensive line, also, they're doing a great job. They are controlling the offense, they're controlling the line of scrimmage. They're just having their way with Shiny Mission North, the front three up front. Feels like this game was kind of going by pretty quick. They've, they've kept the ground. Kept the ball on the ground, and that's really all that they that's all you need to really do. should do. I really think Coach Cornelson and, and his staff, you know, they will probably work on their running game uh, because they have a tough game next week coming up against Shiny Mission Northwest, I believe. We'll definitely talk some more about that. Yeah, so they, they're going to be working on a few things that they're maybe trying next week. Not quite sure, but they're going to be working on a few things. And, you know, he and his assistant coaches, they do a very good job with these kids. That will be an away game? That will be an away game. They'll be playing at Shiny Mission Northwest. Second down and six. Nice handoff. Picked up of about four yards. 
Another thing they've done very well this week is hold on to the football. Yes, they have. In the last week, they had a couple of drop passes, and they also had to put the ball on the ground uh, once or twice. So uh, they they improved all the way around. It's, it's the replay, as you can see, the as they make it to the outside. I believe it once again is Tyler Butash. Mr. Butash brings up a third down and two from the 42-yard line. Just north of six and a half minutes. <clears throat> nice little running play. Pick up of the first down. Pull back. There's a flag that's thrown towards the end. Maybe a little <clears throat> extracurricular activity out here. That running play was completed by uh, number 55, Gus Davis. But let's see what the penalty is and who it is on. Dewey Carter on the run. Cheating crew's done a good job tonight. Haven't had to see them much. I mean, they got a little flag happy earlier in the first quarter, but after that, they've been very pretty silent. So. Offense was <clears throat> false start. I mean, the defense we had offsides early on. That right there was a penalty yep. against North. I believe it's against number ten for Shining Mission North. It's going to march. Michael. Trailblazers to another first down. Michael Brown Jr. A little extracurricular activity with uh, Ethan Reynolds. Personal foul, face mask. Personal foul face mask was called against Shawnee Mission North. That'll be first and ten at the 40-yard line. And we look like a run up the middle. Nice running play. That was a nice run in play by Bergman. We're going to see here on the, on the replay how, how, how the offensive line is just controlling the defensive line for Shiny Mission North. Bergman with a nice 12, what, 15 yard run. We're halfway through the first, the third quarter, that is, the first quarter of the second half, but the third quarter, first and 10. Again, it's like he handed off to, to Bergman. Just keeping Ber Bergman very active. <clears throat> well, he, he bored Butash out tonight, so let's give Bergman a chance. <laughs> Absolutely. Second down and eight from the 16. I think I'd probably look for Butash here. Hand off to Butash, yep. Got another flag down. Nice stop on number 21 for North. I think it's holding against the uh, Trailblazers. That'll back him up 10 yards. And we'll start it over again. Just as soon as I mentioned the officiating crew and not being very involved in the ball game, what do we get? Start getting these flags. <laughs> and no, we don't want to see the zebras. No one comes out to see the guys in the striped shirts. They come out to see the kids play ball. They do have to call what they see. This is true. Second down to 19 from the 27. Nice protection of the ball. He gets around the corner and looks like he's going to go in. Oh, nearly yes, for a touchdown. Yes, he's in. He was out just beyond. <clears throat> Pushed out at around the, forced out at around the five-yard line. Nice running play. Let's watch how they stretch this out. They stretch it, they stretch it, gets to the edge. Nice block by Reynolds. Tell you what Garrett is doing. I mean, Garrett Bergman is really doing a great job on this drive. First and goal from the five-yard line, and we look at the ball just run in by the fullback, number 32, and that is a touchdown, Trailblazers. 
Number 32, Carter Dewey. His second touchdown of the evening. Hey, once again, Gardner Edgerton controlling the line of scrimmage. High snap. Little high snap, but nonetheless, point after is good at the end of the scoring drive. Trailblazers 42, North nothing. And you know, so hey, I tell you what, it's one of the big keys is to have a solid quarterback. And you've spoken a lot about this the last few weeks, last couple of weeks, uh, Chuck, about the freshman quarterback uh, who was in. Tell us more about Weiner. Well, you know, Austin Weiner, uh, Ashton Weiner, Asher Weiner. I don't want to call him Austin. I don't I know, know why. You do. But uh, his name is Ash Asher Weiner. And um, he's 6'5", 192 pounds. And he's only a freshman. So, last week I was impressed with him. He, he has good footwork. He has good poise. He has a, throws a good ball. Nice and easy to catch. And he's got good targets to throw the football to. But not only is he get throwing great, he can also run the football when he has to saw last week where he did a quarterback keeper and got some yards. But the biggest thing about him as being a freshman, he is in charge of this offense. He's very, very confident in what, in what he's doing with the offense, and the offense, they respond to him. He's very good at what he does. So not only is he going to be around for the next four years, out three years after this, and by the time he's a senior, look out. But he's got next year as a sophomore and a junior and as a senior. So... He's got a really big future ahead of him at Gardner Edgerton, and Coach Cornelson has got to be pleased that he's got this young kid for the next three years as his quarterback. So, you know, his brother is the, is the tight end. He's number 47, and as I said, his brother's 6'7". He's just a freshman. He's still growing. He you know, as we say, great pedigree. Yes. Uh, he comes from a family of athletes. His father's an athlete, as we see him having a nice little conversation with big brother with his brother uh, and so that's really nice to see but but yes he has that time yes he does he, he has, has that time. time and to be at that be at the the, the physical development that he is right now um, is pretty is pretty amazing you have to be encouraged if you're coach Cornelson and if you are part of Trailblazer Nation about the the, the, the future of Mr. Weiner and you know the thing about him too one other thing about him is he's a smart kid he knows exactly what Coach Cornelson is trying to do, and they communicate, and they're on the same page when it comes to taking care of business. So he's got all the tangibles of being an outstanding quarterback. He's got the size, he's got the arm, and he's got the intelligence. And, and that's all you can ask for in a kid as your quarterback, and for him to be just a ninth grader. Let, let that sink in for a minute. <laughs> a ninth grader running a varsity football team and doing such a wonderful job with it. So you know, we're talking to... 14-year-old, mm. and he's running his football game, running his football team like he's a veteran. He's been running his entire life. So that tells you what type of young man he is. That tells you what type of upbringing he's had, and that tells you what type of athlete he is as well. So, Kudos to the Weiner family. Kudos to the Weiner family. Yes, indeed. You know, we mentioned earlier at the top of the uh, half that we wanted to showcase a teacher of the week. We have the GESD winner, the great employee serving the district, this week's winner is Gardner Edgerton High School teacher, Miss Meg Hunting. Miss Meg Hunting is the gifted teacher here at Gardner Edgerton High School. And her student wrote, Mrs. Honey, Mrs. Hunting is worthy of this recognition because she consistently goes beyond what is expected to give her students what they need, whether they have her all year long or for a few minutes per semester. Mrs. Hunting spent her summer days searching for options and coming up with creative solutions to provide the education we need. This is just one of the countless times she has advocated for her students in order to get them the best opportunities possible and to be successful, both in high school and for the future. That was from Miss Jamie Pemberton, one of her students. So congratulations to you, Miss Meg Hunting. We tip our hats to you on uh, doing a fantastic job with your scholars and being recognized as someone who was worthy of this great accomplishment. So we wish you the best and continue being great in the classroom. We look forward each week to showcasing a teacher 
who will be recognized as the great employee serving the district. It may be someone from any of the school, various schools that are here in USD 231, but certainly we want to showcase those wonderful staff members, those wonderful teachers here in this great district. Here, here. Second down from the 36. There's a flag on the play. It looks like there's a first down pickup, but don't move the chains yet. That was Sam Keyer on the run, but it got a holding against holding. Sonny Mission North. Once again, they get a, they get a, a pretty good run, get a pretty good drive going, and they shoot themselves with a penalty. Now, I see the clock continuing to run. Are we under the mercy rule? I don't think we have a mercy well, rule. Well, I think they may have a mercy rule because that clock continues, <laughs> the clock to, continues run. to run. It's a, run. It's a continuous clock when it gets to be a certain score. Yes, it is. And so. we're up 42 to nothing. We're not complaining. No, not at all. Not at all. But to piggyback on what you said about the, you know, the administrators and the, and the faculty here in the, the, the school district, kudos to all of you. It's been a tough road with COVID-19, and it's been tough on you guys. It's been tough on the kids. It's been tough on the administrators. And... And it's, this is uncharted territory for all of us. I'm really impressed by Mr. Ryan uh, Colston, who uh, has really ensured that they have a high quality, high quality broadcast team uh, to bring in MSTC Sports uh, to, to really do this has been phenomenal. We'll talk more about some of the upcoming events, uh, but as we get towards the end of this third quarter, our Trailblazers continue to lead. 42 to nothing against Shawnee Mission North. Nope, don't fix your eyes. That truly is the score. And we're so happy to be able to bring this broadcast to you and to be celebrating what we knew would be potentially another victory. So we'll be back after this commercial. This matchup, nice defensive play, another sack, I believe that was, brings up a fourth down. They have had, the Trailblazers have just had their way tonight. As we look at the replay on this, there's no fake, try a little play action, but you got to have somebody to, to fake it to, and your play action just, just doesn't work when there's no threat of a running game. So Trailblazers weren't fooled, they were all over that. They're fortunate to be able to get the ball away. That ball looks like it goes out around the 39-yard line. They're going to mark it at the 40. So another great, uh, more great field position for the Trailblazers. First down at the 40-yard line. As we mentioned, there are some upcoming events, and we're going to make sure from each week We'll give you that information a little bit later. We thank Olathe Health Sports Medicine for providing the athletic training for all of the scholar athletes that are participating on both sides. Looks like they're going to keep it on the ground. We see uh, once again Bergman with the ball. Another running play. We have a new quarterback in the game. Connor Elder, number 10. It's an opportunity for Coach Cornelson to get some of his uh, other players a lot more, some, some game experience. It's Connor rest, Elder. Rest his starters for next week. And some of the young men that work hard during the week that run just as many wind sprints that 
run just as many plays. They're out there in the heat like all the others. Gives them an opportunity to play tonight on homecoming night. See number five, J.J. Jeter coming in to the game. Oh, well, another break. Oh, this looks like it's going to be if he can get towards the end zone. Oh, nice shake. Oh, oh my. Nice running play by number 28, Anderson. Lucas Anderson, I think he shook himself. <laughs> he saw the goal Great. line. He, he was, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Not quite. Excellent run, excellent run. Once again, Edgerton, Gardner Edgerton is able to, to shut down the ends. And a couple of broken tackles. And Lucas Anderson is off to the races. He stutter steps, and he brings himself down at the four-yard line. First and goal. It's like another touchdown. Touchdown. touchdown, Trailblazers. Number 15, Garrett Bergman. You know, it, the future is definitely bright for Coach Cornelson and his staff. Definitely bright. They've got young men that don't get to play that often, and they are taking advantage of their opportunities. And that great that last run was just fantastic. Number twenty eight for Lucas Anderson. That run was just fantastic. He'll 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 stay awake tonight though, thinking about that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, he has G E H S T V. This is true. He can watch he it again, watch. over and over again. He can watch that over and over again. He can share the link. In fact, those of you that are watching, we invite you to share the link with those that you yeah. know and love. To go for two. To see the nice two point conversion. Yeah. yeah well, you know. They give Lucas an opportunity. He didn't score the touchdown, but he did get the two points. Yes, he did. So, yes, he he'll did. He'll sleep a little bit better tonight. But here's the touchdown run. Nice, By nice Bergman. way to complete that. They swapped out the entire offensive line almost, and they're still pretty much having their way. So, you know, it's it's, it's too bad for Shiny Mission North, but they're a very young team. And as I said last year, they were winless last year, and they do have one victory this year. They, they do have to taste of what victory, they have to feel what victory tastes like. They just need to get to the point where it becomes a habit for them to execute. Listen to what their coaches are saying, do exactly what their coaches are doing or asking them to do, and just to be disciplined. And they haven't, they, they've just been overmatched tonight. Gardner Edgerton just definitely. a much better, just a much better physically, much better mentally, and much better um, athletically against this team tonight. So they have I nothing to hang their heads for. They just they just ran into a superior team tonight. That's what it was. <clears throat> so at this point in time of the game, you know, the coach has taken out several of the starters. Yep. Which is very wise to keep them healthy keep them and healthy. You're not trying to run up the score. You just you're putting in your reserves and we see the ball go out of bounds. So and that's going to give North a pretty good field position. Yep. It gives your younger, like as we mentioned earlier, it gives your younger kids an opportunity to play uh, on Friday night under the lights. A couple <laughs> of weeks ago when they against their first game against Olathe South, you know, Coach Carnelson had five players on the field that had never played on a Friday night. And after losing six seniors, he was forced into that position. And so now this is an opportunity to give these kids a chance to play on a Friday night under the lights. So next year when their turn comes, or the year after that when their turn comes, they're not intimidated. They're not intimidated by the lights. They're not intimidated by the crowd, by the band. They're ready to play, and they're ready to enjoy themselves. So this is a good learning experience for them. And trust me, Coach Cornell says he's not going to be easy on them. He still expects them to execute. Cheerleading squads on both sides. We have the dance team here for the Trailblazers. They're ready for football. They're playing as though nothing has stopped. Well, you know, that's the band. Hey, yeah, it's the, the band the, and The everybody. band is always ready. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the band is always ready to play. The cheerleaders, their job is to keep everybody motivated, keep them fired up, and guess what? That's what they're doing. You know, I love the NFL. I like college football. Now, of course, being a Jayhawk fan, we're always disappointed. Uh, every 10 years or so, we get a good team, and we can <laughs> cheer, and we think it's the next best thing in the – the, the, the college starts planning <laughs> to expand the stadium. I think they were supposed to expand the stadium after the, the uh, 2007 season. 
but those plans got halted. You know, that's when Mark Mangino was there. Wasn't he, yeah. wasn't he there about that time? Yes, he was there yeah. during that time. And, but and, and it's interesting because Shiny Mission North's head coach, yeah, Shiny Mission North's coach head, you know, head coach Andy Walter, he was the uh, equipment manager on that team. Yeah. He went to the Orange Bowl. That's true. That's true. Chuck Mangino. So he learned a lot, you know, as far as coaching. Uh, in, in regards to that from, from him. so. But there is nothing like high school football, and we definitely want to focus in even on number 42 for the Trailblazers. That's Ozzie, Ozzie Pogue. Ozzie, Ozzie. Ozzie's had a, another excellent ball game today. Like, just, he, he, just, he was everywhere. And for him to be just a sophomore, another bright spot for Coach Carl Nelson and his team. He's got, he's got, the, he's got his franchise quarterback on the offensive side. And Ozzie, and Ozzie Poe could be his franchise defensive player. The young man can play some football. He's a nice size, 6'3", 220 pounds, but you wouldn't know that he was a sophomore. Another kid that's only a 10th grader, probably 15 years old. <laughs> These kids are smart, they're athletic, and they can play some football. And Coach Cornelson just has to be ecstatic as to what he has this year and especially what's coming back next year. We just saw him on the sideline getting his elbow. Right elbow iced up. Hopefully he's okay. And uh, previous play, nice sack by number 15 uh, on the previous play. So we see uh, Bergman on both sides, highly active. A nice stop here. You know, we were talking about Ozzy. He may be done for the night. He's got some ice on his right arm, on his elbow. So no, no, there's no need to risk him anymore. When you're up 50 to nothing, and you're resting. He's pretty much done for the night. Uh, uh, number seven, Pritchard, the homecoming king, didn't like that tape being snatched off his arm. I kind of wondered, that's going to take off if they're able to grow hair yet on their arms. That's going to leave a mark. That's all right. He's the king. And he shared with us the, the pain. Don't do that to the king. Yeah, he's the king. And, you know, it's, it's good to be the king, as Mel Brooks said. <laughs> that's a little running play by number 22 of North, but stopped by number three, Eli Blazik. Well, North's still trying to run the football. I think they're still trying. You know, they're working on their game plan too. They've got a lot of work to do, but uh, and they've got a couple. They've got a, a tough game next week as well. So, you know what I missed this week? We missed the dancing uh, coaches with the plays. We oh, didn't yeah, have that we this didn't, week. Didn't have the three amigos <laughs> this week. But you know, it, it was entertainment. <laughs> it was entertaining. Well, there's a new quarterback in there as well. Jake, yeah, Jacob Needham. He's a sophomore. He's number 10. So. Young people are having fun. <clears throat> I want to go through the schedule <clears throat> this Tuesday. As we see turnover on downs here. I'll pause on the schedule. Well, you know, with the, uh, with the schedule this year, it's, it's been so up and down because you just didn't know if they were going to play. We're never going to play some games were canceled or rescheduled. Um, some teams decided, though, we've had a couple of players with test positive, so we need to push back. Yeah. And so it's just been, it has not been the ideal situation for coaches, for administrators, for the students, and for the parents. It just well, hasn't been. Well, even in the uh, school system that I serve, um, we've had, they had to cancel last week's game and this week's game uh, because of another team having scholars that tested uh, positive on their team, so, and the protocols of that team were not up to par, so it had a ripple effect. We also see that happening in the NFL. You've seen some of the colleges yep. uh, that have suffered through that. Kansas State was devastated earlier on. Yes, they were. Uh, but they've managed to come back and have two great victories yes, they after that disappointing loss to, what was it, Arkansas State? Yep. So, uh, so COVID-19, it is, it's, it has infected our president, it's infected the White House, it's infected people. I'm even personally touched by that. I lost my brother to COVID-19 in April. Uh, so various others. So sad. Uh, so it's a, it's a sad disease, pandemic, but I'm so grateful to see the resiliency of America. Yes. Of Americans who have continued to push. We've reinvented how we do things, what we do, when we do it. Yep. And those of you that are watching, we encourage you to continue to be careful. Maintain your distancing. Wear your mask. Masks. Yes, wear those masks. And it looks like uh, Sebastian Martin Ricano may have taken a hit that uh, there's a little, little guy out there on the team. He's only 5'4", but uh, he 
got introduced to um, varsity football. <laughs> <laughs> Jake Snyder said hello. Yes. It's like a lot of freshmen, like a lot of sophomores out there, as a matter of fact. Because as, as I look at the, the roster for Gardner Edgerton, there are only two freshmen on the varsity. <laughs> One is yeah, Asher Weiner. But the rest are sophomores and juniors with a, with a handful of seniors. So for the next couple years, this is going to be one potent football team. So we're going to call a timeout to let the clock run, although it's pretty much a running clock. Let it they're going to, going to punt the ball, only one a little distance. Had a delay of games. So, Dr. Jones, it's, it's uh, homecoming night. So, it is indeed homecoming night. A homecoming like no other. Let's wish all the kids to be safe tonight. Yes. Wherever they go. Yes. Tonight or tomorrow night. Maybe have a Zoom or a Microsoft Teams dance. Exactly. Or however they're going to celebrate, but just be safe. Be safe. So we see a turnover on downs. <clears throat> All right, our upcoming events that are upcoming are Tuesday, October the 13th. <clears throat> we have volleyball action. The uh, ninth grade B team, sophomore team, JV team, varsity. They will be competing against Mill Valley. Uh, that's going to be on the 13th. Uh, you can watch it on channels TV, or, or channel or GEHS TV, channel 1 and 3. Our boys soccer versus Shawnee Mission South, uh, JV and Varsity on Channel 2. Uh, Thursday, October the 15th, uh, we'll have the ninth grade football team versus Shawnee Mission Northwest on Channel 4 um, of GEHS TV. Uh, volleyball, Varsity Volleyball, JV, ninth grade, uh, A team will be hosting Blue Valley Southwest on Channels 1 and 3. So, a Busy lot schedule. of action going on. A lot of action going on at Gardner Edgerton High School. A lot of kids involved in different activities, which is great to see. Love to see the kids stay busy. Love to see them do their academic work and their athletic work. So, this is what high school is all about. Absolutely. And I'm glad that they were able to do it and have been able to execute high school sports in a very safe manner. I think Absolutely. a lot of people were very reluctant. Um, there were a lot of battles, a lot of lines drawn. They do a great um, job here. But it's been Houston. really great, and so we're happy that uh, they've continued to be responsible. We look at some of the highlights from this evening as we get towards the final seconds of our game. Uh, we're wife, fortunate he, to see Reynolds with that nice, that nice touchdown play. And then others able to see other plays, and that is a victory officially. It's all zeros on the board. So great game. Great victory by the Trailblazers as they tip their hats uh, to the crowd and they tip their hats to their opponents and they are safely distancing. So we're really thrilled for this victory. Uh, we will be back to kind of summarize this game uh, after this commercial. Once again, Trailblazers victorious 50 to nothing against Shawnee Mission North. We'll be back after this brief message. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Adam Winters, the Kansas Highway Patrol. The Kansas Highway Patrol public resource officers across the great state of Kansas have a message for you. Three out of every four car seats are installed incorrectly. Please read your owner's manual and vehicle manual to learn how to install your car seat correctly. When driving on Kansas highways and you see a trooper in a safety vest and you see the orange cones, you're in a construction zone. Please remember, slow down, don't drive distracted, and move over. It's Kansas law. Now that you've seen us, Make sure you see us and all other first responders and road workers. Move over.
Welcome back to GEHS TV. MSTC Sports, we just saw a great matchup. Give us the play of the game, Chuck. Well, the, the play of the game, well, there were a lot of plays of the game, as a matter <laughs> of fact, but we're going to start off, we're going to go with the one with, uh, uh, with the quarterback, with uh, Ashton Weiner. I always want to call him Ashton, and it's Ashton. Ashton. <laughs> it's Ashton. But, that, but the, that name should be his name. But here it is with the play of the game. As he hits uh, Mr. Reynolds with, a, with an out pattern, and Mr. Reynolds does the rest. He's off to the races. Very nice touchdown. Nothing but daylight. Man really kicked off the game, and we just saw we did. They didn't look back. And you see another, another play. Another here. play from Asher. It's Asher looking, and he finds his man out in the flats, which, which is once again Ethan Reynolds. So give me the player of the game. Who's the player of the game? Well, I think our player of the game is going to be the homecoming king, <laughs> Mr. Pritchard. You know, it's good to be the king, as they say. He um, it picked up one at the interception, and he took it back to the house for, for, his, for his first touchdown. And then later on, after, after he scores this touchdown, later on, after another turnover from Shiny Mission North, he takes a little inside handoff, and he kind of walks to the end zone where no one touches him. So, all in all for the senior, outstanding ball game. Not only does he score two touchdowns, he also becomes a homecoming king. Homecoming king, 50 to nothing is the final score. He also had a great, some great, other great defensive plays. We see a nice run. Another nice run from him. And as he runs over a couple of guys, he's going to be a great addition to, to the Wildcats next year. So you, you Jayhawk fans, may look out for this kid. Hey, you know what? I can at least say I called the high school game that he was in. And so I'm really thrilled for him. It's always good to see these young people um, really, really performing at their highest, uh, the highest level. And I'm sure that all of the scholars are scholar athletes, true scholar athletes to the team. And so as we see the homecoming court, yes, he's very happy that he's homecoming king. He's king of the hill. He's king right of the now. Hill here in Trailblazer right now. Nation. So this has really been a fun matchup. It's been a fun experience uh, to just see all the different people who've made this happen. There are so many people behind the cameras in the truck that are working this this particular program Absolutely. who are bringing this action to you we get a chance to have the pleasure of being up in a nice comfortable booth exactly and we get a chance to sit down and call these games as we see it and so it's really really fun to be a part of this i really want to thank todd henderson for his work and for organizing this team he got the band back together <laughs> again the band is back Chuck. we are back for week two and we definitely look forward to having really a wonderful season uh, with GEHS Sports and bringing the live action to our family, to yes. our families and friends. Yes, we do. We're not only uh, excited about football season, but we're also excited about other events that may be coming up for Gardner and High School. And we look forward to being part of that as well. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we see several of our crew members. We see Miss Dominique, who is out there on the camera. Uh, and this is also like all of our and so she's running the camera. You see Mr. Taylor up there. He's got his camera. Hello, Mr. Taylor. And several others that are running. Yep, that's Mr. A.C. Taylor there. And so uh, various others who are just everywhere. They are making sure that we have this live action brought to us. We've got a chance to see Mr. Coppola earlier at the start of the game. We've got a chance to speak. And we see someone else up there in the, up on the camera. And we see Christian, little Christian, Mr. Christian. Oh, Chris Alt. I'm sorry, Chris Alt. Chris Alt, I thought I saw Mr. Christian a moment ago. And we have Michael Beasley, who's going to be who's also uh, on the camera as well. So all of these ladies It's not the same gentlemen. Michael Beasley that played basketball at Kansas State, is it? No, I don't think so. Okay, I don't I'll think it's that guy. Okay. I don't think it's that guy. He almost won the past championship. <laughs> I think we lost to them at one point. So it's our homecoming home. court. Yes, a great homecoming court. They, are, they were celebrated this evening, and we were so proud of Mr. Pritchard being the king, and Macy, I believe, was her name that was the queen. I'm going to make sure I get that right now, Macy Beasley. Yeah. Well, hey, been a great night. This has been fun. I believe this is all that we have left. Uh, Chuck, I say enjoy this weekend until we get a chance to come back again. Um, well, you know, it's Take me and I'm anywhere, anytime, any place. 
put the bitsky pig skin up, and I'm ready to do it. There we go. There we go. Hey, 50 to nothing. Congratulations, Trailblazer Nation. We look forward to joining you for the next game right here on GEHS TV, MSTC Sports. I'm Dr. Jarius Jones with my friend and colleague, Chuck Holmes. Nice we'll be back. Again, sir. We'll you. be back and see you again. Have a good evening. Good night.